Good morning. It is one day before the 20th anniversary of 9-11. September 11th, 2001. I think we all know where we were, if we were alive. You're getting to that point where, you know, I have children, you know, they weren't around at that point. However, the spirit I have, the DNA, that gets passed along. So I think there's a certain amount of memory in there. There's a certain way that a certain remembrance let's just say that the akashic record i think that there is um we have all the truth it's there we have terabytes of information that can be stored on our dna and we don't know what gets passed down i mean you you see children you know they come out of the womb and they already have their personality they already have an attitude and, and some are like daddy and, and that's just the way it is i mean it's almost as though there's that residual effect that gets passed down and you know it, and that's been throughout history. So what do we really know about ancient times? We probably have it all right here and don't even don't even realize that we just need to unlock it because I think Harvard did a study and said, yeah, you can store terabytes of information. Tons of information on your DNA. So, interesting thing. We're all walking supercomputers, I think. But 2001 I think we all remember where we were. And it was a, at first it was a shocking thing. The, the country was united and you saw American flags everywhere and everybody wanted to go after the enemy. Who's the enemy? Let's, let's go after them. And then we have this narrative created. And I remember, you know, there were, well, one of the terrorists was, um, you know, we found his ID or, you know, his, was his identification, you know, had fallen from the burning buildings and they found it on the ground and later, you know, debunked. But at the time, they're telling us all these stories. See, there was already a narrative. There was already a story created and they had to make things fit. There was an unseen enemy, this terrorist, you know, and if you look at 1984, it's, you know, there's that unseen enemy. It's, a, you know, who is it that we're fighting? Are we fighting Oceania? Are we fighting East Asia? Are we fighting Eurasia? I mean, who are we fighting today? No, we were never fighting them. No, we were fighting them. And it's just this mass confusion. And you really don't know who the enemy is, is what it comes down to. And that's the way they, they like it. They don't want you to know who you're fighting because it's so much easier to have perpetual war, a war that never ends. I mean, we just had troops finally come back from Afghanistan after 20 years. And why did we go to Afghanistan? Were we looking for Osama bin Laden? What were we doing there? Does anyone really know? All I know is once the Taliban was out of control, the poppy field sure did pop. And what's poppy? What's that used for? So that's an interesting thing. And then you had Colin Powell going, you know, before the United Nations saying that, well, there, are, there appear to be weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. You know, building the justification, you go into Iraq when the person who supposedly perpetrated this was not from Iraq, was not from Afghanistan, was actually from Saudi Arabia. Oh, and you know how cozy the the current president or the, the president at the time was with the Saudi royal family. Oh, that's right. We had to do that because, you know, we're on a petro standard, petro dollar to where we'll protect you and you can do whatever you want, but you just got to make sure that that oil is priced in dollars so that the dollar actually has a use case because if it doesn't have a use case, the whole thing dies. And where are we at today? Are we still in a petro dollar standard? Doesn't look like it because we got Russia and China moving in and that's the way it was always going to go. The belt and the road. And then you see California, you see, and this goes deep. I mean, there are so many ties to foreign entities, especially China, because you see CalPERS, the biggest, I think the biggest pension fund in, in the country, California pension fund. There's like 14 companies that they are invested in that are directly tied to the Chinese military or government. I mean, is this not a conflict of interest or is this how these people get paid? Who are they really working for? I don't think they're working for you and me, not at all. So when you take stock of 9-11 and the, the, the lie that was told, we had a building fall down that on that day that was hit by nothing, but it fell with controlled explosives it was a controlled demolition how long does it take any demolition experts out there can that be done in a matter of hours a building wired up so that it can be you know controlled demolition 
how did that building, Larry Silverstein, go look at that, the owner of the building at the time, and in an interview, he said, ah, oh, we just decided there was so much damage, we just decided to pull the building. Okay, that's fine. You decided to pull the building. So you're basically admitting that nothing hit it, but, you know, we just wanted to pull the building because, you know, I don't know, maybe a fire in it or something. Okay, that's fine. But how do you pull the building in a matter of hours? Because the building fell that day. How do you get explosive experts in there to wire that thing up so it comes down without falling all over the place and blowing it to hell? It's a good question, huh? Unless it was pre-rigged, pre-wired. Buildings just don't fall down on their own. What was in that building? Ask yourself that. See, that day kicked off a lot. And I remember George W. Bush at the time coming out and, you know, giving an address to the nation and, hey, we need to create homeland security, you know, to fight this unseen enemy. We need to have a TSA start screening everyone and, you know, violating their, you know, personal space when they go to the airports. We need to have the Patriot Act. And that was ready to be rolled out. I oh, just had it ready to go. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. Nobody saw this coming. After all, Condoleezza Rice said that. We never saw this coming. Yet they were running drills that same day. Simulating the same sort of attack. We've gone 20 years. We've lost a lot of lives. Lives were sacrificed that day in those buildings. Firefighters. First responders. People that were there to help other people. We lost countless military people going to war in places where we should not have been. But we were told that it was a threat and the military, they follow orders because they love this country. The unfortunate thing is this country has been taken over. This country has been taken over by vampires. I'm gonna call them vampires. You can call them what you want, but that's what they are. They're vampires on many levels, vampires a vampire do they steal your energy they steal your blood they want to take everything away from you they don't want you to be free they want you to be enslaved to them we still have an unseen enemy we have that unseen enemy that's invading our bodies that's making us all sick and it's those people who who don't get in line that are making the other people sick they're doing great damage to the society. We need to do something about that. War is being waged on that group of Americans who have chosen to do something that doesn't fit in with the narrative. My body, my choice, doesn't matter. The state will tell you what to do because the state is looking out for your security. security who decides what level of security you need and what's required of you to maintain that security that safety i would rather be free and take the chances of what life has to throw at me than to be kept in a cage and told what to do and maybe fed maybe not We're at a dangerous time in history, but on the other side, you know, a lot of people are fearful. I don't think you need to be fearful. I think you need to realize what you're dealing with. Realize that what you're dealing with are people who really have no power. They have no power other than the power that we the people give to them. So if you voluntarily give them your energy, if you voluntarily go along with a beast system, then that system will continue to thrive. It will continue to live. But if you withdraw your power from it, withdraw your energy and don't participate, it can't live. It will die. People are waking up and seeing it for what it is. There are a lot of people out here that realize what this is. And you know, if you look at the American Revolution, what happened there, you didn't need all of society to participate. You just needed a group of patriots that knew what was going on to say, okay, we're done with this. We're not gonna participate in this anymore. And if you're gonna try and take our stuff away from us, we're not gonna let you. You're gonna be met with force. And it, look at the percentage of the people that stood up and did that. Now, once that happens, and once those people move forward, 
at risk to their own lives because at the time they were traitors to the crown, but they didn't care because it didn't matter anymore. You read the Declaration of Independence from Thomas Jefferson and in, in that outlines all the abuses and the reasons why those people can no longer participate in that old system. They withdrew their energy. They took their power away. The great minds said, we're done. We're gonna form a new government because it's our right as human beings because we're the ones that give power to government. And when that government fails us, we're just gonna take power away from it and not participate in it. And we're gonna create something new because we can, because we're the ones that make it work. And that's just how it is. So you're in that, we're in that situation now where that government, that crown wants to tell you what to do. They wanna tell you what to do with your body. Now you can let them do that you can give over that energy or you can say, no, I'm done. And be at peace knowing that. And no matter what happens at that point, you know you're doing the right thing because it comes from you, not a mandate. It comes from you. And that's the key. Now there are ways to opt out of it. You know, I continually talk about, you know, using sound money. Um, the old way to do it was gold and silver. Uh, you can still do that to opt out of the system. But we've got new weapons now. You know, we are in a digital age, in a digital battle. We've got networks that have been running. We've got Bitcoin that's been running since 2010. We've got Litecoin that's been running 10 years in October. 10 years, 2011. That network's been running, sending value anywhere you want, outside of the banking system, outside of the government, a completely new form of money that we've given energy energy to. And that's why it works. That's why it's, it's being used because we choose to do that. It's outside of all of that. That's a weapon of mass destruction. Not the bogus weapons of mass destruction that, that got us into a war. It's a true weapon of mass destruction that can take down the banks that can pull the plug on the government. It's something that I don't think we've ever had in the history of the world. We've got that choice now. We've got that weapon now. We've got that, that place where we can put our energy, where we can store our energy and it will be held and validated. Nothing can stop it. It's up to us. It's up to us to choose what we want to do, what kind of world we want to live in. We give power to it and it has value. Art, we give power to art. It only has value because we value it. If we don't value the current system, if we don't value the current leadership, if we don't value the vampires that say they're in control, if we don't give them our power and our validation and our consent, then they don't have anything. They have nothing. It's just all a fiction. Their money is a fiction. I mean, you look at it, it's nothing but delusions and artwork and, you know, mystery. It, it's, a, it's a magic trick. That's all it is. You take the dollar bill out, it's a magic trick when you look at it. And it's not a real dollar. It's a Federal Reserve note. So you've got the man hiding behind the curtain, uh, like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, Oh, and I am the great and powerful Fed, and I will create all of you. And then when you pull back the curtain, it's just this these weak, old, frail, failing vampires. That's what they look like. Look like they need blood. This can change overnight. All we have to do is just say no to their system. Quit participating. Use something different. Use Litecoin. Use Bitcoin. Put your energy in those things. Use Digibyte. Use those networks that have been validated and, and people have given their energy to and they work and they've been working. Now's not the time to be messing around and you know thinking that, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm not giving adv financial advice, but you know, there are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there. I'm going to be honest here. Um, there are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there that promise a lot and they've gone up a lot in dollar terms. You lock them up, you stake them, you get more of them, you get these percentage rewards. Now's not the time to be screwing around with that kind of stuff. In my opinion, 
Now's the time for sound money. We are at a point in history where this empire is failing. The dollar system is collapsing. I mean, you look at the price of everything. It takes more and more dollars to buy these things. You need something you can control. You need something in your own possession. Don't be giving it over to a third party. Don't be locking it up with somebody that, you know, it's just like putting your money in the bank, trusting somebody, this trusting the leader, you know, of this coin or... Uh, Trust the network. That's what you gotta do, trust the network. And the most solid network out there is Bitcoin. Litecoin, I would argue, is probably better because it's been running nonstop, never in, inter in an interruption, any interruption, if I could speak. <sighs> 10 years, 10 years in the digital world, something's been running nonstop. Amazing, absolutely amazing. It is sound money. There's only 84 million that can exist. That's only a quarter of a Litecoin for each person in the United States. It's 0 0.01 for the, everyone in the entire world. I mean, it is a worldwide monetary system, payment rail, that just released yesterday. They can do all the stuff that all these other coins can do. You wanna build an NFT on it? Okay, go ahead. You wanna build tokens on it? Okay, go ahead. I mean, that stuff can be done, but it's a finite asset. There's only so much to go around. There's only so much that's out there to be acquired. And there's something to be said about scarcity. It's better to have it, not need it, than to need it, not have it. And as we go into the digital world, I think it's going to be a very, very necessary item to have. Do your research on Litecoin. Right now it's a tremendously undervalued asset that, that can lock up your power, your energy, and you can spend it anywhere. You can spend it on a Visa card, I mean a debit card. You can pay people directly with it outside of any system, but there are systems that are bridging it and allowing it to, to you know, be paid in the existing system. Don't give the vampires power, take it away. Remember what happened 20 years ago. Remember the lie that has been perpetrated on this country, on the world. They're saying it's a new world order now. They're coming out and actually saying it. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's truth. How else could governments be working so much in tandem doing the same things right now if there were not a plan, a new world order? You can either, either give yourself over to it, take the mark, take the bite on the neck, let that vampire in. You can do that if you think it's gonna be easy, but it's not gonna get any easier. It's gonna destroy you. It's like every vampire does. They're gonna take every last ounce of energy and then they're gonna throw you away. That's what they do. So don't even go down that road. Opt out, pull the plug. Litecoin is one way to do that. Think about it in your own life. What's another way to do it? Think about all the ways you can pull the plug from that system. Because it's going down. It's going to die. It's going to try and take as many people as it can with it. Just don't be one of those people. Stopped out. Find a way out. Everything you do every day. All right, never forget. Never forget what happened 20 years ago. Never forget who did it to you. And never forget that those people are still trying to do it to you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I thank you all for watching. I love you all. I do. I'm so thankful. Um, just remember, the vampires are out there. Don't let them come get you. Have a great day.